to the exchange. Since the 2020 election, investors have piled into municipal bond funds at an average rate of $2 billion per week. This comes as state and local governments are seeing credit downgrades outpace upgrades. Extreme and costly weather events like the winter storm hitting Texas right now could pose new risks to municipal credit. Joining us now with his thoughts on how vulnerable localities can weather the impact, Tom Koslick, head of municipal strategy and credit at Hilltop Securities. Tom, uh, how much of a danger do these extreme weather events pose? So while the financial impact from the, the Texas freeze is unlikely to reach the magnitude of what we saw in, say, uh, Katrina or Superstorm Sandy or Harvey, it really reinforces the idea that governments need to prepare and that uh, infrastructure assets need to be updated, I think. And in many of those weather situations, we've seen the federal government step in and act as a support or like a crutch for state and local governments and other public finance entities to the tune of, you know, for Katrina, it was, a, you know, $125 billion, Sandy, $60 billion some, but almost uh, never are there payment defaults, and sometimes there are upgrades, but it really depends on the severity of the events. But, Tom, we're in really strange times now when my wonder is how much is the muni market depending on what happens with federal stimulus? I mean, there are so many state and local governments that are right on the edge right now with the lost revenue from businesses operating and, and, and so forth. Yeah, the good news is that the, uh, the budget shortfalls are not as bad as what most were predicting they would be towards the end of the summer. That being said, there are still budget shortfalls. And on the one hand, it depends. I mean, there is a, there, you know, in some cases, in some state and local governments and for different regions, uh, they are worse than others. But overall, state, state revenues are uh, down a, about 1% from March to December. And that is really going to uh, more significantly impact areas like, you know, the state of New York or New York City or some of the areas that uh, shut down uh, to a larger degree in for a larger uh, or longer period of time. Tom, how, how concerned should investors be about what's happening to credit markets overall? I mean, in the search for yield, there is such demand for debt uh, that the, the rates that you're getting off of even junk are, I mean, really, really low. Uh, are people thinking about these markets in the right way? Yeah, that being said, it's, it's interesting. I mean, and you, you mentioned in, in the preview that uh, flows into municipal funds have been significant. I mean, over the last eight weeks, we've seen an average of about uh, $2 billion a week flow into municipal funds. And so I think that even going back to, uh, you know, the fact that at the end of the summer, we realized that the revenue shortfalls or the budget shortfalls were not going to be as severe. Uh, but there is going to be some ground that's going to need to be made up um, through uh, relief from the federal government. Uh, you know, this is this we are still probably not at the point where we've described that as stimulus. So I think that the, the money that's being talked about right now in Washington, that's still a relief. Uh, maybe when they start talking about something more infrastructure focused, we could start describing that as, uh, you know, something more stimulative. So back to the risk question, mm -hmm. how are you distinguishing between higher risk and lower risk localities, and how important is that now versus what it's been in the past? Yeah, I think that one of the things, that we, one of the things that's happened is that uh, the rating agencies have been pretty slow to downgrade state and local governments, partially because uh, we don't know the extent of what credit deterioration is going to be. Uh, there's a Health officials are now telling us there could be a fourth wave of infection or increases in uh, COVID numbers in another, what, 14, you know, four to 14 weeks. Uh, that could make it even more difficult for state and local governments. But the fact of the matter is, is that if there is, you know, $350 billion of relief that comes from the federal government for state and locals, that's going to go a long way. Yeah, uh, th those ratings not quite able to keep up with reality in, in this fast-paced times. Tom, thank you. Tom Cosley. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And coming up, this stock has been on a tear since its public debut back in November. It's also one of the most anticipated earnings reports in the EV space. We will tell you the name and what investors will be watching for. Plus, the SMH Semiconductor ETF hitting a record high today, led by Universal Display, Taiwan Semiconductor, and Skyworks. We're back in two. 
Muni Money is sponsored by BAM. Ask your investment advisor about BAM insured Muni bonds. When the market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. In the face of market volatility and illiquidity, BAM insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable rating. BAM. Build America Mutual. 